fingernails are falling apart, man. Get some keratin. Look at that. Is that what I need? And that's the, the at least the ends or like the, whatever made up, whatever nails are made up. Look at that shit. Damn. Uh, Both sides this time. You know why? Why? It's fucking phone. Phone. Oh yeah. Fucking tunnel. Just right destroyed there. my fucking thumbnails. Too much swiping and <laughs> shit. It's pretty ridiculous. So earlier this week, you just released a new EP called a special episode of. Yeah. Which we both felt was in a similar vein to dark comedy. Very much. So yes. I like, basically wanted you to talk about kind of like what the concept is for these two projects, basically for Ooh. people who don't know, and kind of like where you're at musically in your career. Oh uh, boy. Um, that's really. Let's take this bit by bit. Um, dark comedy is kind of just what I do all the time. It's the kind of movies I like. It's the kind of books I like to read. Um, things that are satirical. Things that are uh, subversive. Uh, things that seek to entertain but also have a lot to say about everything. And um, yeah, Dark Comedies is a collection of songs that I made that seek to um, entertain, amuse, and confuse. And um, a special episode of it is kind of like the same thing. It's like a, a little snapshot of kind of the same feelings for the most part. We both we thought that this these projects were both very cohesive, but like each track was still very distinctive from each other. Especially since you work with like kind of a variety of producers. So maybe we wanted to, you to talk about kind of like what's your collaboration process with like producers? Like how do you kind of get them to go into your vision? You know what I'm saying? I just uh, I just take their beats okay. and I don't give them back. Like uh -huh. I don't I really don't collaborate in the in the best sense of the word. I don't I don't um. I don't seek, uh, I don't seek input from the producers necessarily. Okay. Like, and I think, you know, everybody I, I work with kind of knows it's kind of how I am. Like, they show me a beat and I like it. I'm just gonna, for the most part, do what I want with it. And if they kind of want to add on something, that's cool, but usually I don't like them to add much. Um, See with Dark Comedy and Late Show, you kind of took the original Toy Light um, and kind of did some new with it. How, how was that process like? Well, because um, I wanted to remix something from the album. Okay. And um, originally he was supposed to do this whole other song. And um, when he actually listened to the album, that, that song called out to him. And so um, we arranged it so Toy Light would get Exile the parts. And so Exile recreated it into like a more kind of boom bap yet somehow trap, trap like yeah, it's and everything. yeah it was really it was really interesting what he did he made me want to like write some raps that still had those same themes but were more like um, more kind of uh, with a little bit more of an aggressive energy it did seem like that it seemed like a little more darker more like a late show kind yeah of feel. yeah i see my songs and colors and that one's like black and mostly black and like a little orange where like the original one with Toy Light is like, like blue. Yeah. yeah. So could you talk about your reason behind creating your Secret, Secret Skin podcast? Um, just, I, I, I made the podcast so that I can have a way for a lot of really talented people I know to kind of create context for themselves okay. and tell their own story and push their own narrative. Right. Um, and to get behind some of what people kind of have to tuck away in, in their public persona. I want them to be able to talk about some shit that they don't even get a chance to talk about. It's interesting that you brought that up because we just felt like you have one of the most refreshing perspectives in rap right now but just because of how, like, honestly, it seems like you're really true to your character. Yeah. And so we, we were kind of wondering it, what, what, like, at what point in your life did you understand like where you kind of wanted to get with your career? Uh, I think I knew when I, like, when I first really started making solo material, um, I knew, it, it goes back to what I was saying earlier about like, I like a certain kind of book, a certain kind of movie, a certain kind of TV show. And it's just these things that have, like they have obviously some mastery over the craft of creating whatever that thing is, but then they take it further by having more of an angle of, um, 
personal reflection, things like vulnerability, things like uh, social critique. Like, I knew I always wanted to have all those elements, you know. Um, I think what's happening now, though, is that I'm like my mastery or my acumen with the craft is actually catching up to my ideas. Okay, you know what I mean? So it's yeah. like a little bit more of like, oh, it kind of works both ways. You know, like, oh, it's a good song and something's happening in it. Right, I've seen, definitely seen the sound craft like yeah. kind of evolve. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so I didn't know how to record for a long time. I really, I thought I did, but I didn't. And I still have a lot of issues with things, but it's like, oh, I, like, there's some real basic shit that I know now that I didn't know before, even through like, mad albums, you know what I mean? It's just like doing it over and over again until things start to click, you know? So what advice would you have for maybe possibly young artists trying to, struggling to find their own place? Gotta keep recording. Just keep recording. Just keep recording. Just keep, keep putting shit out, out too. A lot of people are afraid to push it out. You can't be afraid to push it out. You gotta fucking fail. And, you know, hear people talk their shit. You know what I mean? Right. Helps. So people tend to define your music as art rap. Would you agree with this label? Or yeah, I, you... I came up with that shit. Okay, right, right. My first album was called Unapologetic Art Rap, and I was really going hard with that term, especially at the time, because I felt like, um, like in that moment, I felt like the fact that rock music had a subsection called art rock and that was fine with everybody, I felt like rap should have the same shit. Right, right. Um, today, I don't think that's the best term, but I don't mind. Um, I think uh, any any uh, attempt to like further develop the categories of rap, but not, you know, not in a way where you're talking shit about another category, you know what I mean? Or, right, right. Not the anti this or, you know what I mean? It ain't that, that's not it. It's like what it is itself, you know what I mean? Like, and you know, we try to self-define by, by our values and our values tend to be a little bit more, um, like I was saying, like, you know, the vulnerability and uh, holistic presentation of a person, you know, rather than the a lot of what's come before, you know? So in your music, you comment on a wide variety of social and political issues, ranging from like the music industry's exploitation of streaming services to like corporate media's like uh, control and also like violence, domestic and abroad. So with all these social issues, like if you had the power to immediately resolve one of these issues, which one would you choose? Uh, I would choose. Uh, Wealth disparity. Yeah, I would change that. That's a good one. All right, here's a kind of out there question. On your Twitter, we recently saw you tweet about uh, this post apocalyptic beach dream world. Yeah. What is that about? Oh, it's so weird. It's like a really, it's like a, a episode of Lost. Okay. Um, and I and it's, it's funny. I've had this dream at least twice, maybe three times, and I, and I just. Um, I'm with some survivors. I don't even remember. I don't even know what's happened, but we're all trying to uh, survive. And there's a lot of dead people around, and it's very everything is very dusty. It looks like like if the world turned into Burning Man, you know. But right. even less people, and there's just like there's always a beach around. I I regretted right after I tweeted that that I didn't <laughs> think about the dream more because when I woke up, it was very visceral. Um, but yeah, I lost a lot of it by the time I got to, t to tweeting about it. Mm. All right, last question, from me at least. A memorable part of dark comedy was the kind of various interview snippets that you had throughout. So what do you think are the odds of this interview making it to your next album? Uh, am I, I going to get the audio? Because if I get the audio, then shit, it may be, it might, you know, a very high probability. Definitely. Yeah, man. Right. Michael, any questions? I'm good, I'm good. Right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Cool. Great. Talk to you. Meet you. Cool.